Well, good evening and welcome to Gateway Church Cymru Online. My name is Luke Morgan, I'm the pastor of Gateway and I'd love to give you a warm welcome this evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for our online Bible study. And I know that there are many people who are watching this evening who are, have started back work. I know many of you are tired, but I'm so grateful that you have decided to join with us once again tonight. And I do pray tonight that as we dive into God's word, that the Lord would speak to you. The Lord would encourage you. He would challenge you even tonight. And even after you've switched off from this meeting, you'll feel uplifted and, and ready to go into your day tomorrow. So before we dive into God's word tonight, let's just open up our time together in prayer. and Let's just come before God and ask the Lord to speak to us. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, we're just so thankful tonight that we can be found in your presence once again. Lord, we're so thankful tonight that we can open up your word, Lord. And, and Lord Jesus, we just want to hear from you this evening. Lord, I pray that you would speak to us, Lord. Lord, that you would minister, Lord, that you would just move and have your way in our hearts and in our lives, Lord. Lord Jesus, we ask this for your glory and for your honour. Amen. You know, as we see here in these few verses, we're going to continue our series called The Parables of Jesus. And over the last few months, we've been looking at these, these stories that Jesus shared, these earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. And over the last few weeks, we've been basing ourselves in Luke chapter 15. And we've been looking at these two parables that Jesus shared. The first parable that Jesus shares to, to the crowd who were gathered around him was about the parable of the lost sheep. Then the second parable, which we looked at last week, is the parable of the lost coin. And tonight we're going to look at the third and final parable that Jesus shares in Luke chapter 15. And I'm sure you were familiar with this parable. You might have heard of it in Sunday school or maybe in school assemblies or something like that. Or if you're in church, you will obviously have heard of this before. But this is the parable of the prodigal son. And we're going to be reading from Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 24. And it says this. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have, an, have food enough to spare. And here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned both against heaven and you. And I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him come in. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I've sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick! Bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast for this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Here in Luke chapter 15, we see Jesus tells this story of the prodigal son or the lost son. And Jesus here, as we've looked at the last couple of weeks, he's talking to this large crowd of people. And in that crowd of people, there would have been tax collectors and sinners. And there were also Pharisees and teachers of religious law. And we see here that Jesus is talking about the story about this father who had these two sons. Now, obviously, the main character in this story is the younger son, the prodigal son. You know, this younger son, he asks his dad for his inheritance early. And he packs his bags, he goes off and he, he wastes all that money on wild living, the Bible says. He had parties and all these different things and he wastes his money. 
And then all of a sudden a disaster strikes on this land. And then we find this guy, he, he goes and gets a job and he's eating out of a pig's trough because he's so poor, he's run out of money. And then in that moment, he realizes that he's lost and he decides that he's going to go home. And he comes up with this, this whole story, ready to say sorry to his dad. And he gets ready and he's on his way home. But you know, the Bible says there that while he was a long way off, his father saw him and ran him and uh, ran to him and embraced him and welcomed him back home. He threw a party for him. And we see there that the son who was lost was now welcomed home. And you know, oftentimes when we read this story or when we hear this story, I'm sure that you've identified yourself with that prodigal son. I know I have many times when I read this. I put myself in that in the prodigal son shoes. We all at times have been what have wandered off. We all get lost. You know, we were all lost. The Bible says that we were all dead in our trespasses and sins. We were living in any way that we wanted. We were living in this world and for the things of this world. But then we heard the gospel message. We heard and we heard of God's love and his compassion. We heard of what Jesus done for us on the cross. And we decided we were going to return home. We wanted to know God for ourselves. And we see that God is a gracious God. He's a forgiving God. A God who is full of compassion, full of mercy. And he welcomed us home. We are saved not because of what we have done, but because of Jesus, because of his compassion. And so in this story, we see that this, is, this story is all about this prodigal son who was once lost and found. Now, you might have also heard some preachers focusing on the father. You know, the, this parable could also be known as the parable of the loving father. You know, as I said, the, the, the God is that loving father and he is the one who welcomes us home. Many preachers will focus on that. But you know, there's another character in this story who we sometimes forget, sometimes we neglect. And sometimes we think, especially when I've read this passage, I think that this guy is often just an interruption. Why on earth is this guy mentioned in this story? And the person who I'm talking about is the older brother. Now, as I've said, Jesus was speaking to the crowds of people and there were sinners and tax collectors there. Those who were outcasts in society, those who were lost. And they would have identified with the prodigal son. And they would have heard how God the Father would welcome them and how God loves the lost and God's heart is for the lost because that is the main message in these parables. But you know, also in this crowd, we need to remember that there were Pharisees and those teachers of the religious law. And so Jesus, that's the reason why Jesus mentions this older brother. And it was for, he was particularly including in this message, he was trying to include the Pharisees and the religious teachers. We know that Jesus didn't want to exclude anyone, no matter who they were. Jesus didn't exclude anyone. He is for all people. He wants all people who are lost to be found. And so Jesus here, he mentions the older brother. And here we see, you know, in this parable that Jesus, yes, he exposes the, the failures of the prodigal son. But Jesus also shows here and he exposes the disobedience of the older son. He actually shows the religious attitude, the attitude of entitlement of the older brother. And he was here, as I said, he was targeting the Pharisees and the teachers of the religious law who would have been like that. They would have thought, yes, you know, we belong to God. We have it all together. We aren't lost. But their hearts were hard towards the Lord and to, towards the Lord's heart as well. And Jesus talks about the older brother here in Luke 15, verse 25 to 32. And it says this. Meanwhile, the older son was working in the fields. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And he asked one of the servants what was going on. Your brother is back, he was told. And your father has killed the fattened calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him. But he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing that you told me to. And in all that time, you never give me one of your young goats for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours comes back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fatted calf. His father said to him, look, dear son, you've always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. You know, as we look at the, the end few verses in Luke 15, we see here Jesus is talking about the older brother. 
And we see, if we're being honest tonight, the, the attitude of the older brother stank. His whole attitude was, look, look what I've done for you. Look what, how I've worked hard for you. It was kind of a religious spirit. Look what I've done. And, and this is how you repay, repay me. You're celebrating the fact that my younger brother who made this mistake and ruined his life has come home. You're celebrating that. And he's basically saying to his dad, look, I've been loyal to you. And this is how you are repaying me. You know, the older brother, he had forgotten that everything that the father had was also his as well. He forgotten his father's heart. Simply put, the older brother was about the father's house, but completely missed the father's heart. I know when we look at this tonight, we can, you know, I'm sure you'd agree with me. Sometimes we can be like that as Christians and believers. You know, sometimes we forget that God's heart is ultimately for the lost. We are saved. God loves us. We are, we are his. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. But yet sometimes we can get angry at the fact that God's heart is for the lost. We can forget that. In fact, we should be celebrating that. We should be pursuing the lost. We should be going out there to spread the good news of Jesus for all who don't know Jesus. But yet sometimes we can treat church as, about, as a religious clique, as a religious group. Sometimes we can be all about God's house, but we forget about God's heart and you know Jesus is reminding us here that actually in this story the story is not about one lost son it's actually about two lost sons we see here that while the one went out and lived wildly he was lost but yet there was a son who was in the home who was also lost his, his heart was lo lost we see that his heart was hard towards his father and to the father's love and we see that this is actually this message is not just for unsaved people but this is actually also for saved people as well we need to remember that god's heart is for the lost you know we we read in 1 samuel chapter 16 verse 7 this is what it says but the lord said to samuel don't judge by his appearance or his height for i have rejected him the lord doesn't see the things that you see People judge by outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. You know, I pray that our heart would be like the father's heart, that we wouldn't have a hard heart like the older brother. And that even when we go astray and we wander away, that we would realize that God's heart is always for the lost. He is pursuing the lost. And he showed how much he, he loves lost humanity by sending his one and only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us to take the punishment for our sins. Jesus did nothing wrong. He was without sin, but Jesus bore your sin. He bore my sin upon himself so we could be forgiven, so we could be restored and reconciled to our heavenly father. Jesus made that way possible. And these parables show and always remind us that God's heart is for the lost. My prayer as we've come to the end of this little mini series within our series called the parables of Jesus. My heart is that we would have God's heart for the lost. So I do pray you've been encouraged as you've joined with us this evening. You know, over the next couple of weeks, we're going to look at a few more parables of Jesus before we go on to our next series together. And I want to encourage you, please join us again as a church on Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. and Sunday evening at 5 p.m. for Church Online. It's going to be a great day, a day. Please invite family members, invite friends, share our pages with people as well. It'd be great to come together. And please stay connected with us as a church. You can do that through our website, gatewaychurchcamry.co.uk and through all our social media platforms as well. But please know we are here for you. We are praying for you. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you soon. God bless. Thank you.